Oh, we got a couple. Oh. It's filled. Oh, dude. Look at that. This pond is loaded with big bass. Got him. Oh, he looks good. Live bait fishing this time of year. I'm telling you, you dirty dog. Well, I'm on. That feels good. Chumming them up. I actually haven't seen a fish at all. <laughs> Welcome back to another video, folks. You might be wondering why I have a piece of honey wheat bread in my hand, tearing off tiny little pieces and throwing it into the water. But all you real anglers out there, you know exactly what I'm doing. I am chumming up the secret ingredient of today's video. So folks, it's no secret, it's summertime right now, it's blazing hot, and this can be one of the toughest times for a fisherman to actually catch fish. But I have found live bait fishing to be the absolute best way to combat this heat and still catch fish. Now, which live bait you use is obviously completely up to you and your comfort level. You could be using live worms like night crawlers, Canadian worms, red worms, blood worms, whatever. You could use crickets and grasshoppers. You could use minnows, which could literally catch anything. But today I'm focusing on a very specific species of fish, and that is the sunfish. If you guys remember a few weeks ago, we stocked this pond with thousands of new bait fish, but specifically we put in red ear sunfish and copper nose bluegill. And those little fish, especially if you catch them in the right size, can be big bass candy. Now you can catch your live bait a bunch of different ways. A cast net's a great way to do it. You could dig around the edge of the pond if you want to find night crawlers that are alive. You could go traipsing through the swamp looking for crawfish if you wanted to. But I have found a very simple way that is the most effective and that is a fish trap. And I just so happen to know where one is on the property. Let's head over to the micro pond real quick, see if we can find a fish trap. Also, we need to check up on our three new pet fish. All right, fishies, please still all be in here. Oh, there's two right there. There's two. That looks like the medium sized largemouth and the spotted bass. Where's the big one? Oh, there's the big one right here in this corner. Oh, there he goes. Wow, he moved with a quickness. Wow. Look at that big old boy. That's such a crazy sight to see in this pond. A bass that big. You guys remember in the last video, we fixed the micro pond, we stocked three brand new bass in it, and we're going to name those fish in the next micro pond update video slash fish feeding that we're gonna do back here really soon. I see the fish trap. That's what we're looking for right there. This crude little metal cage is going to be the key to harvesting some fresh live bait. Oh! Guys, I just busted open the fish trap. There was a block of mud in there. Look at this. Look, <laughs> there's a baby crawfish in there. Talk about awesome live bait. We might have to keep him, dude. Simple little two-piece metal fish trap. They Actually, this is a crawfish trap, I think, isn't it? But it yeah, kind of yeah. doubles as a minnow trap slash all fish trap. Super simple, you just put it together like, like so. And we're gonna put our bread inside here. Just load this thing up with bread. I want that scent to get out there. Got some paracord here. The most versatile object known to mankind. There we go, fish trap full of bread. Let's go toss it out there. All right, now we just chun this area and we have natural shade from the dock boat. And that should be a guarantee. Let's let that fish trap marinate for a few minutes, see if we have anybody come through. We may have to switch locations. We may have to move this trap around a little bit, you know? I don't know where these new bait fish are relating that much yet. They just got in, they're still kind of acclimating. Oh, we got a couple. No Dude, I didn't even see them in there. That's so crazy. Look at my guys here. Oh gosh, now I gotta cut the paracord to open it back up. I'm such an idiot. Worth it. <sighs> Boom. This is bass candy, folks. This is exactly what we're looking for. It's a little bluegills or red ear. That could be a mix, actually. Right into our bait bucket they go. Look at that one. You talk about perfect size. Yeah, that's probably a red ear right there. That's probably one of the many red ear sunfish that we stocked a few weeks ago. Very nice on our first attempt. Three solid fish. They're all perfect size, perfect to put on a hook put a bobber on there, chuck it out, let that fish swim around and get eaten by a much bigger fish. But three is not gonna be enough. Let's load up our little bucket here. The clip works a lot better, by the way. Don't have to cut that every time. So that, that works. Thank you, Andrew. You're welcome. For making that sacrifice off of your keychain. Just gonna send it 
right there. Oh yeah, there's fish around it. I just saw a couple. We're gonna get what we need here. Ideally, I like to have at least a dozen of bluegill or brim that size to go fishing with because you're gonna lose a few, a few of them are gonna die, a couple of them are probably gonna get eaten, hopefully. So, you know, you need some backups. Nope. No. Really? Maybe a little deeper out there? Maybe. Dang it. And, oh yeah, here's a bunch of fish right here. Oh yeah, a bunch of fish. It's just bread, guys. There's no need to get all crazy about it. Nope. What? It's weird, man. There's fish everywhere. Let's go back to the scene of the crime. The original crime. I think the key is getting it right in that shade, you know? I also forgot to mention, we're not fishing the backyard pond today. We're just harvesting bait from here. Then we are gonna head to a pond that I have been told has gigantic bass in it and try out this technique there. All right, it's time to check. We really need to get going and actually start fishing soon. Oh, we got one. One, that's it? All right, well, we're slowly getting there. This is a really small one, but that's actually a, a great thing. That is bass candy right there, folks. Boop. Go in there with your buddies. I'm gonna toss this thing in one or two more times. I just cannot believe that it's not catching more. Somebody? Nothing. Okay, well, something did just occur to me, Andrew. What's that? We are going to a pond that has brim. So we could, in theory, bring this with us and we could take the four that we have True. You with me? True. And just start fishing with them now. We literally just rigged up four poles, so that's perfect. We can get all those out on the hook, keep this in the water while we're fishing. We might be able to replenish our bait on the spot. I like it. All right, got the bucket full of bait. Or not full, but there's four little brim in there. Got the aerator. Gonna be going, giving them some fresh oxygen. We've got a plan on how to get more bait once we get there. And hopefully we won't need more bait. Hopefully those four brim right there will just yield us like a three pounder, a five pounder, a seven and a 10. How about that? Let's head to the fishing pond. Hey, are you cool? Hey, Look at how sweet that dog just walked up. I know you dog. You're a stray, but you're kind of nice too. Come back. Give me poochies. Don't bite me. This little dog is a sweet, yeah, sweetheart right here. An absolute sweetheart. Y'all better not be coming jumping in that water when we're trying to fish now. You hear? Snake patrol. We're due to see a snake. Very due. We have not seen one in a while, and you know me. I'm like a snake magnet. Speaking of snake magnets, look at this freaking John bug. That's a literal snake habitat right there. Oh, dude, we might just set up right here. Oh, I see a great place to put the fish trap. I'm just gonna leave the fish trap over here in this kind of shallow water. I see brim and stuff. Oh yeah. I gotta kinda get it out there is the only problem. Oh, maybe, maybe. Oh yeah, they can get in there. Oh yeah, oh yeah. I like that. Yeah, I like this. Just use the snake habitat as part of the video. Right. And that way, maybe scare them out of there, you know? Yeah. Is this a freaking widow maker or what? Or this is just a vine thing. Oh. I kind of want to get this out of the way. Watch out. Watch out for the big cam. Watch your face. You know, clear a little bit of stuff out for our buddy Dylan over here, the pond owner. Shout out to you, man. Thank you for letting me fish your pond. And Dylan, the pond owner, has told me on numerous occasions, this pond is loaded with big bass. I'm talking about double digit potential. And they have a very healthy bluegill population, which is what drives that big bass growth. So hopefully in our fish trap over there, we can replenish some bluegill as we go. It's time to get rigged up though, fellas. We've got four rigs, like I said, all kind of different lines, different leaders. Doesn't really matter, guys. Might matter a little bit, but I'm just ready to get fishing. On this rig, I'm probably gonna put the smaller bluegill. They all look pretty healthy. They're all in there just chilling. Okay, that's the smallest one right there. That's, oh, I got spined. There we go. I got the littlest one. Oh no, don't hurt me. Ow, he's beating me up. Ow! Let's go for a little back hook on that first one. 
right there through the meaty part of the back and boom he's still alive and literally kicking i love this area right here man it's just completely shaded right now it's like 20 degrees cooler at least yeah oh my gosh that's wonderful that's like right out there on the edge of that shade line come here doggy don't do it you dirty dog <laughs> literal dirty dog although i can't blame him it's 100 degrees he's just trying to cool off look at him he literally just got in the mud he's just like oh, i'm just gonna sit here for a minute all right come here red ear oh you're not nearly as feisty as your friend was here we go back hook him the same way we're gonna put him a little bit closer to the left side here i think see if i can cast this guy without slinging him all that's the thing we don't have many to sling off there we go there we go that's where I wanted him to be. That's where he might get eaten. I went ahead and pulled out the old most expensive inshore combo that I've had sitting around. Just because it's a spinning combo. I mean, it's not exactly ideal for this, but whatever. And on that, oh, hey there, buddy. That's definitely who I want. On that big combo, I'm going to put, I think this is the bigger bluegill that we got. This is one of the bigger ones right there. Yep, I believe it is. I guess I'm gonna put this guy just like right underneath this tree right here, I think. I'm just gonna kind of flip him. Wow, that scared me so hard. I'm not playing fetch with you, dog. Well, we say this every day. I mean, there's gonna be some adversity and today it might be dog related. Wow. Oh, I lost my brim. Are you me? So we've lost a brim already. A, that's not good news because we don't have any more except the one. But B, maybe that's a good thing. Maybe it was getting bit it been. and we just didn't know. Is that possible? It was definitely getting some action. All right, last, last live bait right there for now. Now we haven't checked the fish trap yet because there's a freaking dog just standing next to it. Let's go ahead and back hook him and get him back out there. Thing is folks, we're looking for that right bite. I don't care if we catch 100 fish today or not. I just want to catch that, that one big one. There we go. Lovely, lovely. Okay, I like what we got going on here. I like the area that we got covered. One of the many advantages of live bait fishing versus any other type of way is this right here. Get a few rods set up, stick them in the ground, got your bobbers out there to tell you when you got a fish bite. And meanwhile, we're just back here sitting in the shade. Out. Chilling, drinking some fluids, staying hydrated, some snacks, living life right now. Now we just need that big bite and we are due. Let's check the old fish trap. Oh yeah, I mean, he's right next to it. There's not gonna be anything in there, right? He actually has been dead still. Oh my gosh, it's filled. Oh, dude. Look at that, it's full. Let's That's get up perfect. here. That's freaking perfect, there's a bunch of them. Oh man, they're smaller too. There's a bunch of smaller ones in there. Look at this. Look at that. Look at these beautiful bluegills right there. Into the bucket you go. I don't think we're gonna need all of these, but I'm gonna keep a few of the good size ones. I think the rest of y'all we can send back. That dog did not move the whole time, by the way. No. Look at y'all, I mean, he's still right there. He's very undisturbed. Dude, that was a freaking jackpot, man. A couple of our bobbers are going crazy too. Oh my gosh, that bobber is swimming like, dude, look at that. Look at the way he's swimming. Something might have him. Something might have him. Where's my orange one? Something does have him. Well, I'm on. That feels good. Are you kidding me? Look at that. Where's the other bobber at, dude? Our orange bobber's gone. You don't, you don't see it? No, I don't see it. Oh, get him in. Oh, no. He's wrapped around the rod. Jesus. Oh, my gosh. What's happening? Oh, fish number one. Not big, but I gotta figure this out quickly. I think there's a fish on this, dude. Grab that. Grab that and back up. Oh no. Back up, back up, back up. Still hung up on my rod. Oh no, Just keep backing up. Keep backing up. I think there's a fish on there. I don't think so. No? Where's the bobber at? What is happening right now? Whoa. Whoa. So <laughs> We have line wrapped all around us. Guys, this fish is a little gut hooked, so let me try to get him out real quick. Well, that didn't take too long, folks. Now, he was gut hooked pretty good. I'm gonna try to get him back fast, give him a chance to live. 
a really good looking fish, not big of course, but man, he hit that like a ton of bricks. I'm gonna go ahead and send him back quick. Get back out there, buddy. You got this, you can make it. That was one of the most wild sequences me and you've ever had. Yes, it was. I mean, I'm over here checking the fish trap. I look to my right and I see one of the bobbers just going like this on top of the water. So I'm thinking, whoa, all of a sudden it goes down. This rod stuck in the ground goes oh, oh, like there's a fish. I also noticed that the orange bobber is gone too. Now, it's still gone. Gone again, yeah. Wait, let me see this right. What is happening right now? I, I don't even know where my line is. Dude, there's a, there's a, there's a fish on there. No way. Yeah, yes. Yes, there is. I knew it, man. I knew it. I think it was just sitting down there with it. I hope he's not gut hooked too or Dylan's gonna kick us out of here. <laughs> we show up and kill two of his fish. Oh no, he's good, he's good, he's good. <laughs> what the heck? Back to back. I don't know if we just caught those two fish at the same time or if that happened while I was fighting the first fish, but there's fish number two. He's hooked in the top of the mouth like you like him to be. Unbelievable. Live bait fishing this time of year, I'm telling you. Man, that's a really good looking fish. A little it football is. right there. He's gonna be somebody one day. Good genetics in him. Let's get him back. See you, buddy. I'm gonna venture a guess to say we've got the right lure tied on right now. Oh yeah. I'd say that for sure. Man, if we're looking for a big one, I think the strategy at this point is pretty simple. I mean, we keep that fish trap in the water because we know we'll have some good bluegill, access to good bluegill for bait, but it's only a matter of time. We put a couple more hours in out here and we get a few more bites. How long is it gonna be until that pond giant, that eight pounder comes along and just sees a bluegill struggling? I think having the rod on the ground on that last one helped me. Helped give it a little bit of bounce back when that fish first hit and got tight. Wow, that was a nice little sequence of events. That dog has not moved. I know. He has not moved. Hey, I'm fine with that. I mean, he's sitting there just hanging out. He's not hurting us at all. Let's get one of these native bluegills in the mix. Bluegill actually out of the pond itself. Shifty little jokers. There we go. Oh, he's pooping. My guy is pooping a lot right now. He's about to be swimming extra fast here. Holy sh That's like a human-sized poop. Let's get him over here. What a sequence of events. That got my heart going right there. Mine too. That was a jump start to both of us, I think. Whoa. That orange one is Oh my God, it's already down. You're joking me, another one. Out of the same spot. They are stacked up right here. Unbelievable, man. And this one's not huge either. Wow, a little bit better. Healthy, look at that one. Biggest one so far. He's got a gut on him. Oh, he's feisty too. Look at my guy right there. <laughs> that one wasn't in the water for 15 seconds. I hit that. Now that's one of the natural bluegill that we got out of this pond. So this is the exact bait and forage that this fish has been eating probably his whole life. Got a noggin, healthy, probably the biggest fish we've caught so far. Just the best looking fish for sure. And we're slowly upgrading in size. If you notice, the size is going up and the aggressiveness in which they're striking this live bait is definitely improving. Good job for you, buddy. Thank you. Thank you for biting on this hot day. Well, I can already see the main issue is gonna be keeping bait in the bucket. So I'm gonna get the rest of these rods rigged up with what remaining bluegill we have. And I'm gonna put the fish trap back out there with some fresh bread next to our friend, the dog, who's just, holding it down for us right now. Guys, I can feel the big one coming. I can feel it. Put this fish trap back out there with some old gross bread. I'm going right back to where I was, I think. Even with this dog here, those little fish don't seem to mind. I'm having to work hard to keep these rods yeah, baited and keep them in the water. Man. Good workout in today. That's a good problem to have. There we go. That's where they are right there. Let me move this big one. Move the big one out there to the money zone. That makes sense. He just got hit maybe. Yep, yep, he's about to go down. See how crazy he's swimming? Oh yeah, there he goes. <laughs> no way he came back up. This is such a hot spot right now. All right, I'm putting it down. That's the key, you gotta have the rod down. Take a look at my friend here. He's all jacked up, that's for sure. Oh my God, he impaled himself on the hook. Yeah, he was definitely getting clobbered. 
he was getting clobbered. He's basically dead. Dude, look how tore up he is. Oh, yeah. He's definitely getting hit. I mean. Barely has any scales left on him. Wow. Dylan, the pawn owner, thinks that may have just been giant brim attacking that smaller brim. So that gives you an idea of the size of bluegill that are out here. All right, let's check the old fish trap again. Ah. I see some things flashing around. Oh, yeah. These are all pretty small. I might move this. I might move this to try to get some little bigger ones in there. This is a good looking spot. Oh, is that a turtle? Oh, dude, there's a turtle. Yeah, I get it. Gosh. Yeah, I do not want to be messing with a turtle. Come on. A turtle, really? What is your problem, turtle? What are you going to do with that big old brim? Are you alive, my friend? I don't think you're doing too good. No, that's not what I like to see. Just straight belly up. Well, I guess if we needed a sign to maybe switch sides of the pond, maybe that was it. I sure don't want to tangle with an angry turtle and a hook in his mouth. Well, there's some. I'm not sure if those were already in there or what. Dang, those are still super small. We got one or two we can put in there for now. That's okay. All we need is a chance, man. Oh, Blackie, Black, you bastard. You son of a gun. You dirty dog. All right, let's get one of these native bluegills out there. Let's test out this new spot. It has been dogged once. You know, the fish are probably also used to that. They know that dog. All right, bluegill, you awake? Oh, just literally just nothing. No, no movement. Okay, casting is going to be a little difficult, but we really just need to get it in the water. Just need to get it out here in the shade. Watch that dog. I am. Hood! What a cast. Oh, he's hauling. Something might have him. Something might have him. Dude, Something's got dude, him. Something's, got, Something's him. got him. Immediately, oh, I pulled it out of his mouth. I lost my brim. Dang. Immediate, dude. This is crazy. If I get the if I get the brim in a good location, it gets bit almost every time. Dang. Well, you hate to lose a brim that quick. That hurts. We don't have that many left. But it is good to see that we got activity over here as well. You, at this pond today, you haven't been able to rig them up fast enough. They've nope. been getting hit so quick. You got to, but as soon as you rig it up and cast it, you better be ready. These little brim too. I mean, I'd like them to be a little bigger, but the plus side is we could probably catch a gigantic brim on them. True. And that would be nutty to catch like a two pound brim on a brim. I've never even heard of such a thing. Not even sure if they, if they would eat it, but I mean. Huge. I bet they would. Yeah, bluegill are pretty gosh darn aggressive. Yeah, they're very aggressive. They're underrated. Come on. Speaking of a miracle, we got somebody on the move here. Oh, there he goes. Oh gosh, he's going. He's going. I'm gonna let it, whatever it is, eat. I'm gonna let him eat. Oh boy, Andrew, here we go. Got him. Oh, he looks good. He's in the sticks, no. Oh, shoot. Oh, he's not even that good, but he seemed like it. He seemed like it. Fish number four. They are inhaling the live bait today. I don't think I could have given a better demonstration as to how effective live bait can be in the summertime. Not a big fish. Guys, I don't care anymore. This is so much fun. Once again, he is gut hooked. That's kind of the problem with letting them eat it. All right, there we go. I had to bend that hook to get him out, but look at my guy. Another aggressive, eager little summertime bass. He's bleeding a little bit, but I think he's gonna be okay. He's got a lot of spunk. I think he's gonna be fine. Look what I had to do to my hook. <laughs> wow. That hook's gone through some things today. And that's just what happens, man. When you're just catching fish that good, that often, your equipment just starts to fail. I believe we're down to our final brim right now. Check it out, last brim. He's probably not even doing that good right now. He's been pulled around, beaten up by me, but I need him to come through. We need a big fish. If there's a trophy bass in this pond who's hungry right now, this is the chance. This is the last chance we may get today. <whistles> ah, 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 I didn't think about it. Uh, I lost him anyways. Darn, last is a bluegill. I don't know if you were my good luck charm or my bad luck charm. I'm not sure yet. Look at the way he's looking at us. I've never seen a dog look at a human that way. It's like he's somehow angry and friendly at the same time. 
He's like disappointed, but optimistic. All right, folks, we're back at the backyard pond. I'm gonna wrap it up right here, but some things for you guys to look forward to. Got a big pond update coming. Got maybe some structure getting added, might build something on the pond. Gonna be just adding some features, put it that way. So make sure you guys are subscribed. Also the micro pond now has fish in it, as you guys have seen, three very different fish. And so we need to do a fish feeding over there. So get in the comment section, let me know what type of bait should we try to feed them. We've done a bunch of different things in the past, but I'm open to suggestions. We also have some more just straight up fishing content coming as well. So just another reason to subscribe with the bell notifications enabled, that way you don't miss anything. Also have a pretty large project boat update coming very soon. I've been seeing you guys comment. I'm not ignoring you, but there are some major updates. It is very close. Let's just leave it at that for right now. So needless to say, there's a lot of things coming on the channel over the next few months. Thank you guys for being a part of it. Thank you for watching. So much fun fishing with live bait today. I really would encourage you guys to go out and do the same. See you next time, folks.